The capital of the United Kingdom, London is one of the most iconic cities in the world. Bursting with attractions and world-class events and festivals, London is a major tourist destination for travellers from all over the globe. Amongst the sprawling modern metropolis of shops, galleries, and museums, there are numerous historical structures dating back throughout the city's history. Whether you are planning an indulgent vacation full of shopping, whining, and dining, or a busy break seeing all the sights, London is a perfect destination for any traveller. In today's video, I will help you decide where to stay in London to get the most out of your time in this magnificent city. To help you get a better idea of where to stay in the city to get the most out of your trip, I will introduce you to 13 of the best neighbourhoods in London for tourists to stay. I'll start with Westminster. If you are visiting London for the first time and want to stay within a stone's throw of the city's most iconic attractions, then the borough of Westminster is the perfect location for you. Staying here will have you right at the heart of the city and all the top sites. Not only will you be on the doorstep of major sites like Big Ben, Buckingham Palace, the London Eye and Westminster Abbey, you will be surrounded by other top neighbourhoods. Once you are done sightseeing you can easily head off to the fancy shops of Knightsbridge or the chic restaurants of Covent Garden. One of the most prominent structures in Westminster is Westminster Abbey. The history of Westminster Abbey dates back as far as the 10th century, whilst the majestic abbey that stands today began construction in the 1200s. Westminster Abbey is an instrumental piece of British tradition and political history. Every English monarch has been coronated here since 1066. More recently, this is where Prince William and Catherine were married. Just behind Westminster Abbey is Big Ben, easily one of the best-known structures in London. No visit to London is complete without a postcard worthy snap of the iconic clock tower, officially called Elizabeth Tower. Technically Big Ben is just the name of the bell that chimes the hour. The tower is located at the north end of Westminster Palace. Once a royal residence dating back to the Middle Ages, the current structure was built in 1840, after the original palace was destroyed by a fire. Sitting right on the banks of the River Thames, Westminster Palace is now the seat of the British government. Better known as the Houses of Parliament, visitors are welcome to observe debates amongst the ministers. Alternatively, you can take part in a guided tour of the building. Downing Street is just a few minutes' walk north of the Houses of Parliament. The residence of the Prime Minister, the street is gated off from the public, but it's still interesting to pass by if you're in the area. If you cross over Westminster Bridge you will arrive at the southern end of South Bank. A walk along the riverside will offer you fantastic views of the Houses of Parliament. South Bank is also home to several family-friendly attractions, such as the London Aquarium and the London Dungeons. Here you can hop on the London Eye and take in some fantastic panoramic views of the whole city. The London Eye is the tallest observation wheel in Europe and sees over 3 million passengers each year. From the top of the London Eye you can see many of London's most famous attractions. On a clear day you can easily see all the way to the skyscrapers of Canary Wharf or the huge O2 Arena all the way in Greenwich. You'll also get a fantastic aerial view of nearby Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace is probably the most famous building in the whole country. Home to the British monarchy, visitors can take tours of the state rooms or observe traditions such as the changing of the guard. Buckingham Palace is set between Green Park and St. James Park. St. James Park, with its large lake, is a hotbed for local wildlife. Particularly known for its bird population, keep a lookout for the local pelicans and brilliant green parakeets. Neighbouring Green Park is perfect for picnicking with its wide open lawns and brilliant view of the palace. You will notice that Green Park has a lot of deck chairs. Be aware that you will be charged a small fee if you want to use them. Being super central and popular with tourists, Westminster is far from the cheapest area to stay in London. If your budget can accommodate the costs of such a desirable area, then you will have some excellent luxury hotels to choose from. Covent Garden is one of London's chicest areas. The quaint cobbled streets and covered markets lend the area a traditionally English feel. Street performers provide novel entertainment for tourists and locals alike as they drift between the shops and cafes. Whether day or night, Covent Garden is always lively. During the day, the area is one of the city's most popular shopping districts. At night it is one of the best places to go for a more refined party experience. If you want to spend your evenings relaxing in some of London's most fashionable bars and restaurants, then Covent Garden is the place to be. Covent Garden is home to the chicest nightlife in London, without the extortionate price tag of Kensington, Chelsea, or Knightsbridge. Beyond the restaurants and bars, people flock to Covent Garden to partake in London's world-class theatre scene. Covent Garden is the heart of London's West End, one of the most renowned theatre and performing arts districts in the world. Covent Garden is where you will find some of London's principal performing arts venues, including the Lyceum Theatre, the London Coliseum, and the Royal Opera House. 
numerous other theatres and venues line the streets, putting on an incredible array of shows year-round. Leicester Square lies to the west of Covent Garden. Another key part of the West End, Leicester Square is home to theatres, casinos, and comedy clubs. It is also the location of several prominent cinemas, which often host big red carpet events and film premieres. At the north of Covent Garden sit the pretty back streets of Seven Dials. So named for the seven roads that make up the area, which all meet at a central roundabout. This is an area full of small theatres, fashionable cafes, and high-end boutiques and beauty stores. Trafalgar Square is just a few minutes' walk from Covent Garden. Nelson's Column stands as the centrepiece to this large public square, flanked by four stone lions and a pair of fountains. Statues of famous figures stand at three of the corners, whilst the fourth plinth is left free for temporary installations. Aside from being a popular meeting place, Trafalgar Square often hosts open-air events such as concerts. The London Gay Pride Festival is also typically hosted here, with the parade leading through Soho to end in the square. The National Gallery overlooks Trafalgar Square. Along with the adjacent National Portrait Gallery, this is one of the must-visits for anyone who loves fine and classic art. If you are in London around December, you will want to stop by and visit the Trafalgar Square Christmas tree. The impressive tree is gifted to London each year by Norway, as thanks for assistance during the Second World War. In fact, the Covent Garden area as a whole is a lovely area to stay if you are spending the Christmas period in London. Covent Garden Market and Seven Dials have some of the best Christmas lights in London, with new installations each year. Just across Waterloo Bridge is the popular South Bank. Home to the Royal Festival Hall, National Theatre, and British Film Institute, South Bank is a centre of London's art scene. The London Eye is just a few minutes' walk south along the river. You will often find street performers entertaining the tourists by the river. A daily book market takes place under the shelter of Waterloo Bridge, whilst a popular Christmas market stretches along the riverside each winter. If the numerous cafes and restaurants overlooking the Thames don't strike your fancy, there's also a street food market held every weekend behind the Royal Festival Hall. A walk east along the River Thames will also offer you a view of the iconic Oxo Tower. Once a factory producing Oxo stock cubes, the famous windows were designed after planning permission for illuminated advertisements was refused. Being one of the most fashionable areas of London, as well as very popular with tourists, accommodation in Covent Garden can get pretty pricey. You have plenty of luxury hotels to choose from if you stay here. If you're working with a tighter budget, you have a harder search. Soho is the best area to stay in London for nightlife. Right at the heart of central London, this is the best area to stay if you want to be surrounded by excitement throughout the day and night. Soho is full of incredible bars and restaurants. Practically every street is bursting with fantastic venues spilling out onto the pavement. Popular as an after-work hangout, Soho is busy even on weeknights. Soho is home to London's Chinatown, so you will find tons of excellent East Asian restaurants in the area too. This is one of the best places to stay if you are visiting London around Chinese New Year or any other big Eastern festivals. You will also find tons of nightclubs around the area. No matter what kind of intensity you like from your evening's entertainment, Soho has something for everyone. Soho is also the centre of London's LGBT community. You'll notice there are loads of gay bars throughout the area. Soho really comes alive during London's gay pride celebrations. It's great fun, but not if you don't like crowds. Soho is another big part of London's West End, with both the Apollo Theatre and Dominion Theatre located within the district. Leicester Square is just to the south, so it's popular for people to grab dinner in Soho before or after a show. Surrounded by some of the most affluent London neighbourhoods, including Malibun, Mayfair and Fitzrovia, Soho is home to numerous Michelin-starred restaurants. From traditional British fare to cuisines from around the world, this is where to go to sample some of the finest food available. To the north of Soho is where you will find London's most famous shopping district, Oxford Street. One of the most famous streets in the world, Oxford Street is home to the flagship stores of numerous well-known brands. Adjacent Regent Street is a bit of a fancier version of Oxford Street. The busy avenue links Oxford Street with Piccadilly Circus. Here you will find numerous high-end brands such as Rolex and Burberry. If you are visiting with children, you should definitely take them to Hamley's. Both the oldest and largest toy store in the world, Hamley's boasts seven floors devoted to all kinds of toys. Each floor has its own theme, including immersive sections dedicated to Harry Potter and Star Wars. Hamley's hosts numerous events and installations throughout the year, so it's always worth popping in to see what's on. No matter when you go though, there will always be staff performing magic tricks to wow the kids. There's even a cafe on one of the upper floors for when you need a break from all the excitement. Running parallel to Regent Street, Carnaby Street is a hub of London fashion. 
the entrance is marked by the iconic Liberty Department Store. Carnaby Street boasts an array of well-known fashion brands like Doc Martens, as well as smaller, more boutique brands. Piccadilly Circus is best known for its luminous billboards. The junction of several major roads, Piccadilly Circus is a popular meeting spot for tourists and locals alike. Chinatown, Leicester Square, and Green Park are all within walking distance of Piccadilly Circus. If you are looking for somewhere to enjoy a traditional afternoon tea, there are plenty of excellent venues nearby. Fortnum and Mason and the Ritz Hotel both offer some of the fanciest afternoon tea experiences you could want. Soho isn't just parties, food, and shopping though. If you want to take in some culture, there are plenty of great museums and galleries nearby. The British Museum is within walking distance to the north. In addition to its permanent free exhibitions of artefacts from around the globe, the British Museum offers a packed calendar of temporary exhibitions. These usually require a ticket, so try to book ahead. The Royal Academy of the Arts is just off of Piccadilly. The Academy boats several exhibition spaces with a frequently changing array of installations and events. Knightsbridge is home to the most high-end shopping experience in the whole city of London. This is the best place in London to stay if you are looking for a luxury vacation. Boasting the likes of Harrods and Harvey Nichols, retail therapy doesn't get more indulgent than a shopping spree in Knightsbridge. Possibly London's most famous department store, Harrods is the place to go if you want to browse the ridiculously expensive furniture only millionaires would consider paying full price for. The lower levels boast multiple rooms filled with glistening jewellery. For those of us who can't afford the opulent homewares on offer, the food hall is where you will want to actually do some shopping. From chocolate to cheese, Harrods Food Hall is the perfect place to pick up some scrumptious edible souvenirs. Just down the street is the less famous but equally chic Harvey Nichols. Boasting a restaurant and a champagne bar, this is the perfect place to shop for some luxury clothes or cosmetics, and then immediately put down your bags and relax. If you follow Piccadilly Road to the other side of Green Park, you can continue the upmarket experience. This is where you will find one of London's best-known luxury hotels, the Ritz. Even if you can't afford to stay the night, you can still treat yourself to a fabulous afternoon tea in their glitzy dining rooms. Alternatively, continue your luxury shopping spree at Fortnum and Mason. This department store is favoured by the royal family and boasts multiple floors of exclusive clothes and homewares. It's worth visiting just to glide up the grand staircases. Shopping isn't all there is to do here though. Knightsbridge is also home to some of London's top museums. The Natural History Museum and Victoria and Albert Museum are both next door to one another, right outside South Kensington Tube Station. The Natural History Museum is one of the most popular attractions in London for families. From dinosaurs to the iconic suspended blue whale skeleton in the foyer, there are plenty of family-friendly exhibits to keep visitors of all ages entertained. In winter, the area in front of the Natural History Museum hosts yet another family-friendly attraction, the Natural History Museum Ice Rink. This is a super popular attraction with both tourists and locals, so you will want to book tickets well in advance if you plan to get on the ice. High Park runs along the north of Knightsbridge. Aside from offering a relaxing green space to escape from the hustle and bustle of the city, Hyde Park is a great place for those travelling with children. There's plenty of space and playgrounds for them to work off some energy. If you are looking for a romantic date idea, consider renting a boat and heading out onto the Serpentine Lake. Alternatively, hire one of the many bikes you will see scattered around and take a pleasant cycle around the whole park. To suggest that you stay in the city may seem rather redundant, however the city refers to the oldest part of London that dates back to the original Roman settlement. As such, this is one of the best places to stay to appreciate the history of the city of London. In the city you will find some of London's most iconic attractions and landmarks. Being very centrally located and full of popular things to see and do, this is one of the best areas to stay for first-time visitors to London. In the east of the city, you will find Tower Bridge. One of London's most recognisable structures, though often confused for the considerably plainer London Bridge, no visit to the City of London would be complete without crossing over Tower Bridge. Recognisable for the two grand stone towers at either end of the bridge, visitors can climb the stairways within the towers to reach a second, raised walkway. Known as the West Walkway, visitors are able to walk between the two towers along a viewing platform with a glass floor. From here you can enjoy panoramic views over London and the River Thames. Tower Bridge is steeped in history, with much of it displayed in an exhibition in the South Tower commemorating the workers who built the bridge. The centre portion of Tower Bridge is able to be raised to allow taller ships to pass through. A schedule for when the bridge is due to be raised can be found online. It's worth checking ahead to see when the bridge will be raised during your trip to London as it's quite fun to witness. Tower Bridge is actually not named for its own towers. 
rather it is so named for being right next to the Tower of London. Another of London's most famous landmarks, the Tower of London is located right by the north end of Tower Bridge. Built in the 11th century, the Tower of London has been a royal residence, as well as a notorious fortress and prison for almost a thousand years. The Tower has a notoriously bloody history, having jailed numerous well-known figures as they awaited execution, including Anne Boleyn and Guy Fawkes. Now it is a popular tourist attraction. Each year, millions of people visit to tour the Tower, or view the crown jewels which are housed inside. If you're lucky you may even catch a glimpse of the famous Tower Ravens. St. Paul's Cathedral is located in the west of the city. St. Paul's Cathedral has been in this spot since the 7th century, although the original was destroyed during the Great Fire. The modern St. Paul's Cathedral was built in the 17th century and stood as the tallest structure in London until 1963. It's not just historic buildings you should keep an eye out for. Some of London's best modern skyscrapers can be found in the city. The Gherkin is one of the best-known modern buildings in London, so nicknamed for its iconic shape. Notting Hill is of course best known for the eponymous carnival. For one weekend every August the area is transformed into a massive street party. A colourful parade winds through the main streets. Visitors can enjoy lively music, dancing, and delicious Caribbean street food. This is therefore obviously the best area of London to stay if you are visiting to attend the carnival. The tube stations around the area can get really crammed, so you can avoid the hustle and bustle by just staying at the heart of the party. As you might expect, the prices for accommodation skyrocket during the carnival. If you are working with a smaller budget, you will definitely want to avoid staying in Notting Hill over Carnival weekend. Outside of carnival season, Notting Hill is a much more laid-back area. One of the less touristy, fashionable areas of central London, Notting Hill is known for its colourful residential streets. One of the most iconic streets in Notting Hill is Portobello Road. Best known for Portobello Road Market, one of London's most iconic street markets. Here you can shop for everything from jewellery and antiques to street food. For a more contemporary shopping experience head to Westfield. The largest shopping centre in Europe, you can find tons of big-name brands, as well as excellent cafes and restaurants. The Village Wing offers a luxury shopping experience with brands such as Gucci and Burberry, plus a champagne bar. Paddington is probably best known for the adventures of the eponymous Paddington Bear. Like Paddington Bear, thousands of people experience Paddington train station as their first introduction to London. If you are planning to travel around Britain or want to explore outside of the city during your trip to London, staying close to Paddington station would be super convenient for you. Paddington is connected to train lines that stretch all the way across the country. Paddington station is one of the biggest train terminals in London. Aside from being well connected to other areas of England, this is also where the Heathrow Express departs from. If you are flying into Heathrow Airport and taking the train into the city, this is a super convenient area for you. If you are a fan of Paddington Bear, then you will be able to indulge yourself here. Within the station you will find both a bronze statue and a gift shop dedicated to the famous bear. Three more Paddington Bear statues are located around the area, marking the start of the three print trail routes. Each route will lead you around the various sites and attractions of Paddington, including Little Venice, Hyde Park, and the Diana Memorial Playground. Hyde Park is the most famous of London's many green spaces. Covering over 350 acres, there is tons to do in Hyde Park year-round. With lakes, ponds, and miles of winding trails, you can spend hours exploring the park. Marble Arch is one of the best-known attractions in Hyde Park. The Triumphal Arch was intended to be an entrance to Buckingham Palace, but was relocated to its current spot in 1851. It's now overlooked by the Marble Arch Mound, one of London's most controversial tourist attractions. Right next to Marble Arch is Speaker's Corner. Stop by on a Sunday morning to hear people addressing passers-by with rousing speeches on whatever topic they find important enough to share. Or take a stand yourself and join the legacy of famous speakers such as Karl Marx and George Orwell. Hyde Park is also home to the Princess Diana Memorial Playground. Definitely worth visiting if you are travelling with children. The centrepiece of the playground is a wooden pirate ship on an artificial beach. You can let your kids play whilst you relax in the cafe. North of Paddington you find Little Venice. This pretty network of canals is lined with waterside cafes and restaurants where you can relax in the tranquil atmosphere. Little Venice is also home to numerous barges and canal boats, some of which even boast small shops and cafes on board. You can also catch a boat ride from Little Venice that will take you right into the heart of London Zoo. A few minutes' walk away is Baker Street. Most famous for being the home of fictional detective Sherlock Holmes, Baker Street also boasts one of the best connected tube stations in the city. Just down from the station is Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. 
Paddington is one of the best neighbourhoods in London for families. All the green space of Hyde Park, along with its playgrounds, gives kids plenty of space to play and get out some energy, while there are plenty of family-friendly attractions within walking distance. Meanwhile the convenience of Paddington Station will make it easy to get your kids between the airport and your hotel. The area is typically quieter than other tourist districts, so fewer crowds to keep track of everyone in. One of the less overtly touristy areas of London, this is also one of the more affordable areas to stay. If you are looking for a reasonably priced hotel room that's also centrally located, this is one of the best neighbourhoods to consider. Chelsea is one of the poshest areas of London. Less touristy and more residential, the area is full of upscale boutiques and classy restaurants, catering to the area's wealthy community. Whilst you will find plenty of well-known brands here, you will also be able to discover smaller boutiques and more exclusive designers. Between the chic stores of Chelsea and neighbouring Knightsbridge, you can shop to your heart's content and then relax in one of the many stylish cafes. Chelsea is home to several respected galleries and museums. The Saatchi Gallery is one of the most respected museums of contemporary and modern art in London. Meanwhile, the National Army Museum exhibits equipment and uniforms from all the way back to the 1600s. The Chelsea Physic Garden is a sweet little breath of fresh air down by the river. The second oldest botanical garden in England, the Chelsea Physic Garden was founded in the 17th century and is home to numerous species of medical plants. If you want to escape from the hustle and bustle of the busy streets, there are plenty of parks to retreat to. Hyde Park is within walking distance to the north. Alternatively, cross Chelsea Bridge and relax by the river in Battersea Park. Battersea Park is a lovely haven, with numerous sculptures, pretty gardens, a shimmering lake, and an elegant waterside Chinese pagoda. There's even a little zoo where children can interact with smaller species like otters. As one of the wealthiest and most fashionable neighbourhoods in London, accommodation here can get pretty pricey. Whilst there is little to suit budget travellers, those with more generous allowances have plenty to choose from, with an abundance of elegant boutique hotels in the area. Kensington is one of London's wealthiest tourist neighbourhoods. Full of fabulous museums, upscale shopping and high-end restaurants, Kensington is the home of laid-back luxury. A little away from the big-name tourist attractions, Kensington is lively, but not as crowded as the city centre. South Kensington is home to numerous family-friendly museums. The Science Museum, Natural History Museum, and Victoria and Albert Museum are all within South Kensington. High Street Kensington is a popular shopping street that runs through the heart of South Kensington. Aside from well-known brands and fancy cafes, High Street Kensington is also home to several smaller museums. There are two major parks in Kensington. Kensington Gardens surround Kensington Palace at the west end of Hyde Park. Amongst the manicured lawns and winding pathways, Kensington Gardens hosts numerous monuments and statues, as well as the Serpentine Art Gallery. The Royal Albert Hall, one of the major performance spaces in London, is located along the southern edge of Kensington Gardens. Hosting everything from operas and ballets to theatres and concerts, the Royal Albert Hall is a beautiful building worth taking a stroll past, even if you aren't attending a show. Holland Park in the west of Kensington is definitely worth visiting, especially on a sunny day. The Leafy Park is home to a small forest, along with its numerous manicured lawns and gardens. Keep an eye out for the roaming peacocks, they have a tendency to sneak up on you and scream. Make sure to visit Kyoto Garden. The small Japanese garden at the heart of Holland Park, with its waterfall, koi pond, and traditional Japanese ornaments, makes for a peaceful escape from the hustle and bustle of the high street. Kensington isn't the cheapest area to stay in London. You will mostly find luxury hotels here, especially in South Kensington. However, there are a few mid-range chain hotels to choose from if you have your heart set on Kensington, but don't want to break the bank. Nestled between Chelsea, Knightsbridge, and Westminster, Victoria is one of the most convenient places in London to stay. Between the central location and the major public transport stations, you will be able to easily explore the whole city, as well as areas outside of London. Victoria is a bustling transport hub to the east of Chelsea. The busy train station runs train services that connect across the breadth of the south of England. Victoria Station is where the Gatwick Express terminates in London. If you are flying into Gatwick Airport and plan to take the train into the city, then Victoria is where you will enjoy your first introduction to London. Victoria is one of the best areas to stay if you want minimal fuss getting between the airport and your hotel. If you are on a shorter trip and don't want to waste time travelling between your accommodation, the sites, and the airport, this is ideal for you. Being right between Westminster and Knightsbridge, Victoria is one of the best places to stay to enjoy London's top tourist attractions and high-end shopping districts. A walk along this stretch of the Thames will offer a wonderful view of the iconic Battersea Power Station. 
Victoria is one of the best places to stay if you want reasonably priced accommodation right at the heart of central London. The hotels that surround the train and coach station are remarkably affordable for the location. Southwark is right across London Bridge from the city. The vibrant area is a diverse mix of business and pleasure. Towering office blocks loom over bustling markets and historic pubs. One of the biggest tourist attractions in Southwark is Borough Market. Borough Market, London's best food market, is a fantastic place to pick up delicious local street food or sample top quality produce. The stalls will often hand out free samples too. The market stretches up next to Southwark Cathedral. Over 800 years old, the Grand Cathedral holds its own, even against the towering Shard skyscraper. The Shard is one of London's most famous skyscrapers. The shimmering tower of glass boasts luxury hotels and exceptional restaurants. Visitors can travel up to the Shard's viewing platform to take in stunning panoramic views across London. London Bridge Tube Station exits right at the base of the Shard, so it's super easy to get to. Southwark runs along the southern side of the River Thames, so you will have easy access to the attractions of South Bank's East End. The Tate Modern is located at the south end of Millennium Bridge. London's biggest modern art gallery, the Tate is a must-visit for any art lover coming to London. Right next to the Tate Modern is the Globe Theatre. A faithful replica of Shakespeare's own theatre, this is the perfect place to experience Shakespeare's plays in a breathtakingly authentic atmosphere. The original Globe Theatre was destroyed by a fire in the 1600s. However, you can still visit the site of the original, marked by a weathered bronze plaque. Out on the river, you have London's floating naval museum, the HMS Belfast. Once a mighty warship in the Second World War, the HMS Belfast is now permanently mud in Southwark. Visitors can climb on board and explore the huge ship with guided tours and detailed exhibits. A little outside of the main tourist centre, Southwark offers a great selection of both mid-range and luxury hotels. Whilst you may struggle to find much that's super affordable, you will have plenty of more reasonably priced options than deeper into the city centre. Once the centre point for London's red light district, rejuvenation over the last few decades has allowed King's Cross to grow into one of the coolest London neighbourhoods. King's Cross is now the centre of London's thriving community of artists and creatives. Behind King's Cross Station is the main campus of Central St Martin's University of the Arts. Numerous small galleries populate the area, many demonstrating works by local artists or students. In summer, the area along the canal often hosts open-air film and music festivals. The old warehouses of the area have since been converted into a trendy shopping locale. Known as Cold Drops Yard, you can browse edgy boutiques and relax in trendy coffee shops. Alternatively, the area between King's Cross Station and the canal has been transformed into a haven of high-end, contemporary shopping. Numerous fashionable cafes and restaurants line the road, spilling out onto their streetside dining terraces. There's a great variety of museums for visitors to enjoy around the King's Cross area. The British Library is just the other side of beautiful St Pancras. Housing the Magna Carta and over 400 miles of bookshelves, the British Library also hosts regular fascinating exhibitions. Literature lovers can pair their visit to the library with a trip to the Charles Dickens Museum. The Postal Museum is also a surprisingly fun museum to visit. Visitors can ride the old mail train that used to transport post around the warehouse. The British Museum is even within walking distance of King's Cross. Harry Potter fans will already be familiar with King's Cross, as it is famously the train station from which the Hogwarts Express departs in the books. If you are staying in the area, it is definitely worth taking advantage to get here before the crowds. Whilst there's no actual platform 9 3 fourths that we muggles know of, there is a luggage trolley embedded into the wall of the station's main lobby. Guests are free to take photos posing as a young witch or wizard, or pay a fee for extra props and a professional photo. Right next to the photo spot is the platform 9 3 fourths shop. Here you can pick up plenty of Harry Potter goodies and souvenirs. Both the shop and the trolley can get super busy though. Try to get here early or be prepared to queue. King's Cross is within walking distance of vibrant Camden. The home of London's alternative scene, Camden is a colourful hotbed of unique shopping, excellent nightlife, and fantastic live music venues. Camden Market is one of the best-known markets in London. Really, the whole area is comprised of a collection of overlapping markets that form what most people know as Camden Market. Horse Tunnel Market, better known as the Stables, the most iconic Camden Market. Camden Town Market overlooks the lock. Meanwhile many of the side streets host street stalls and food vendors. In addition to the many restaurants and bars in the area, there are numerous prominent music venues in Camden. The Blues Kitchen and the Jazz Café, along with many other pubs and bars in the area, host regular live music performances. The Roundhouse has been a staple in the London music scene for decades. 
Meanwhile, the Electric Ballroom is a popular rock concert hall that doubles as an indoor market on weekends. Shoreditch is the heart of London's young hipster scene. Located in East London, Shoreditch is a bit of a controversial area for being the poster child for London's gentrification. Typically, East London is considered the less affluent part of London. However, Shoreditch and the surrounding areas are some of the trendiest places to stay. Shoreditch is perfect for anyone who loves vintage clothes and alternative shopping experiences. You will definitely want to check out Box Park. Built from shipping containers, this shopping centre is full of fashionable brands, independent boutiques, and exceptional street food. Old Spitalfields Market is one of the most iconic markets in London. Meanwhile, nearby Brick Lane boasts another popular market, as well as some of London's best curry houses. Shoreditch is also one of the best areas to stay if you love street art. Many of the walls here are covered with colourful murals. Local stores and brands advertise their wares with colourful shopfronts and creative installations. Being that East London is still the less wealthy part of London, the hotels in this area of London are typically much more affordable than in the city centre. Even with East London becoming increasingly fashionable, there are still plenty of quality budget options to choose from. Shoreditch and the surrounding East End is the best area to stay if you are working with a smaller budget. You'll be able to stay in one of the trendiest areas of London, without the high price tag of central London. With tons to see and plenty to do, London is perfect whether you are planning a weekend city break or a longer vacation. With a packed calendar of events, London is an ideal destination, no matter the time of year. With new attractions opening up all the time, London is worth visiting again and again. You will always have something different to discover. With so many distinct neighbourhoods to choose from, there is sure to be at least one that suits you perfectly. By now you should have a much better idea of exactly the best areas to stay in London. No matter where you stay in London, you are certain to have a fantastic time. Have a wonderful trip.